Mega spoilers for all seasons of Fear the Walking Dead up to the end of Season 4 and minor spoilers for The Walking Dead up to the end of Season 8. Use the timestamps in the description if you want to jump to anything specifically. Season 4 of Fear the Walking Dead is split into two halves that consist of pretty much two separate stories with some reoccurring characters from Season 3, a bunch of new characters, and one crossover from The Walking Dead. The first half starts a year or so after the final events of Season 3, and it takes place over two time periods, with a bunch of flashbacks taking place in multiple time periods. The second half is pretty straightforward, with very little time jumps making it easy to follow. The reason for the large time jump in the first half is, well, who the hell knows? Just a creative choice, I guess. Probably to allow crossovers between The Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead, as we see with Morgan, who leaves Rick and the gang and heads off on a pilgrimage only to stumble into some new characters in Fear the Walking Dead, who ultimately meet up with the old characters on the show. It's all rather confusing, even if you are not high when watching. But who's not high when watching? I mean, high on life, right guys? Anyway, the time jump will allow for possible future crossovers, but more about that in a bit. I'll start with the first half of Season 4, which is a little confusing time-wise, so let's just split things up into two time periods like they did in the show. We have Then and The Now. The Then takes place a little over a year since the final events in Season 3. The war for water, the battle with the proctors, the dam exploding, and all that jazz. The Now takes place a short while after the final events in The Then. The two time periods are separated by a different colour scheme in the show and are jumbled up in each episode. So I will try to give a breakdown of what I believe to be the significant events in chronological order, not in the order they appear in the show. The Then. We pick up a year after the events at the dam. Mighty Madison and the Funky Bunch, who managed to find each other after the dam incident, have taken refuge in an old stadium near the Texas border. But more than that, they have turned it into a refuge for other people too. They are joined by a bunch of kill-offable characters and this chick called Naomi or June or Laura or whatever her name is and this kid Charlie. They have set up a small farm, kitchen, infirmary, quarters and so on creating a semi-sustainable and most importantly walker-proof camp. But oh no! Pests have taken over the crops and they are running out of food just as these dorks rock up and demand to hand over their stuff. Seems like the gang is in a bit of a pickle, as due to a spy, the dorks, known as the Vultures, led by Mel and his brother Ennis, have been pre-raiding Madison's scavenging sites, thus making the gang's supply runs fruitless. They even took the light bulbs, filthy hoarders. The Vultures decide to wait out Madison and crew by setting up camp outside their stadium. They are waiting for Madison's gang to starve, leave, or conceit and join them. What a bunch of smellies. But the gang outsmarts them and finds a ton of supplies, food and fertilizer to resupply and regrow their crops. Mel decides the vultures can't wait around any longer as their own supplies are running thin, so they leave begrudgingly. No blood is spilt. Not yet, anyway. Charlie turns out to be the spy who was leaking information to the vultures, mainly their supply status and personal info. The gang are pissed and Charlie leaves with the vultures. Mel and his brother Ennis, after abandoning attempts at taking over the stadium, end up having a big fight and Mel splits only to crash into the back of a truck and break some ribs. Whoops! Madison and the gang rescue him and Mel tells them that his brother Ennis is coming for them. If this place won't fall on its own, he's gonna make it fall, said Mel. Ennis attacks with oil-covered zombies and Madison breaks bravely sacrifices herself in order for her kids and the rest of the gang to escape. What a legend. So just to clarify, all of these events I just mentioned happened in flashbacks or retellings of the events throughout the first half of season 4. So this brings us to the now. Morgan from The Walking Dead leaves Rick and the crew as it appears he's just sick of seeing people he loves die. He loses people, then he loses himself. He then soon bumps into some new people, a lonely cowboy named Jan and a crazy but tough reporter named Al who drives an arm truck. They muck around for a bit and then get ambushed by Alicia, Strand, Luciana and Nick who are looking for Ennis and Mel in order to seek vengeance for the raid on their stadium home. Nick catches up to Ennis and impales him on some deer antlers in retribution for the previous attack, but then is shot by the young and confused Charlie. Nick dead. Which was a total bummer dude as he was one of the more evolved and complex characters in the show. But that's The Walking Dead for ya. The gang carries on to try to find the remaining vultures and murder them right in their faces. Morgan, Al and John are not so keen on the killing but tag along for the ride anyway. Morgan and John eventually leave the gang and go to Lone and in search of June, John's lost love. There is a whole flashback episode with June meeting John. Turns out she's a real sneaky person who changes her name a lot. Trust issues of course. I won't go into too much detail here but yeah, John who is in love with June is on a 
mission to find her. Aww. John and Morgan confront one of the vultures and tell him to watch out as the Madison mob are coming to murder them all. Morgan and John then meet up with the Madison maulers and tell them that they warned the vultures not to come. But the vultures rock up anyway. June rocks up moments later. Looks like she is now a part of the vultures. And well, she is, but only out of necessity. She's just a survivor who during the Battle of the Stanium managed to grab a car and escape. She then, for some random reason, joins up with the vultures. She says it was out of sheer survival and that she thought everyone else was dead, but it does seem rather odd considering the just transpired events and that she has always been a lone survivor anyway. Anyway, Alicia took this as an affront and as treachery and fires at her, but John jumps in her stead and gets shot right in the guts. A shitstorm ensues. Most of the vultures get shot or flee while Al rescues John and June from Alicia's wrath. Morgan convinces Charlie to join them, else be slaughtered by Alicia. Mel tries to escape, but Alicia fires from her grenade launcher and fucks him up real good. The crispy Mel pleads for his life, but the cold, dead-hearted and hate-filled Alicia impales him right in the face. Mel dead. John is bleeding out and the Morgan gang need medical supplies. The only known supplies are apparently in the infirmary in the burnt out stadium. So they ram through the doors and are confronted by hundreds of crispy walkers. The very same walkers Madison set alight a few days earlier. At least I assume it's been a few days. It's probably not more than a few weeks anyway, but we don't know for sure. Also, how did so many of the zombies survive? Now just bear with me on this slight tangent. Now we all know with most zombies, you need to destroy their brain in order to kill the zombie, right? Blunt force trauma impaling, shredding, slicing and dicing, but are there other ways to kill off the brain? I don't mean binge drinking, but what about heat or cold? If you freeze your head, you will kill your brain. If you apply extreme heat to your head, you will kill your brain. So how can a zombie brain survive a fire? I always thought in reality, which is a fun word to use when discussing fantasy, if you set a zombie on fire, eventually the heat would be great enough to kill it, right? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Anyway, the zombies didn't die, and so we get a nice big mid-season finale with added tension when the mighty Madison Marines show up seeking what they believe to be justice. Alicia and Al have a fight in the truck when Alicia finds a tape of her mum, Madison. Alicia confronts June, but Morgan manages to talk her down. Alicia realizes that she is in the wrong by blaming everyone for her mother's death and concedes, allowing June to go free and save John's life. The mid-season ends with everyone clearing the air and eating noodles. Now I know I skipped over a lot of fine details and some subplots and the love arc between John and Laura, but I think I got the major plot points down. If you need something specific answered, leave a comment and I will do my best to answer it. Now, on with the second half! The second half takes place shortly after the events in the first and opens with Morgan wanting to head back to Virginia to reunite with Rick and the Ricksters. Al agrees to take him in her super truck. Morgan wants everyone else to come, but they are reluctant at first. John and June are content to stay, perhaps even heading back to John's cabin and attempting a life there. Alicia, Luciana and Strand have set up camp in a giant mansion, but are alone, depressed and drunken. They have apparently given up on just about everything since losing their loved ones. It was Madison who held them together, who led them, and without her, they are lost, like puppies in a fun fair. Anyway, a bloody big bastard of a storm comes through and sends zombies flying all over the place, but not leaves and rain apparently. They all get separated, and when the storm settles, Morgan ends up 400 miles across the state because he fell asleep in a truck that drove off shortly after. He meets Wendell and Moe, who claim to be dropping boxes of supplies around at marked locations. The supply crates are meant for those in need. Morgan heads off alone with the aim to find his lost new friends, Al and Alicia and all that, when he changes his mind as his desire to return to Alexandria is so strong. On the way to catch up to Moe and Wendell, he bumps into a bound and blinded Jim, a brewer who specializes in making delicious delicious beer. Jim joins Morgan to unite with Mo and Wendell. Mo Wendell, only to discover that Mo Wendell stole the truck with all the boxes in it and ditched the guy who was helping people on the side of the road. They lied to Morgan about being the good guys. I mean, they're not evil, but they're not exactly good either. Also, they are the ones who kidnapped Jim in the first place. But why? To get a secret beer recipe, of course. I actually really liked the beer arc in this season. Makes you think about the future post-apocalypse, not just survival. To quote Jim when talking about his beer ambitions used to be uh, commercials during football games, buckets of suds at local dives. But we've turned back time here, mister. History is built on beer. He then goes on to talk about different ancient civilizations and how they used beer to sterilize water and provide basic nutrition, turning nomads into farmers and so on. It's a really cool monologue. Might be one of my favorite quotes from the entire series and in fact, makes me want to grab a beer right now. Just hang on a sec. That's tasty. 
And we're back. So anyway, Morgan does his thing and convinces Mawendo and the recently allied Jim to give him a ride back to Texas to find Al and Alicia and the rest of his new friends. Also, they were going to drop off the supply boxes on the way. That will hopefully help those who need it. Morgan makes regular announcements over the radio, letting those who are able to hear know that they are making drops and are here to help. That's when we find out this evil lunatic woman, Martha, has been listening in and plans to attack them. So what's the deal with the new antagonist, Mental Martha? Well, short story short, during the initial zombie breakout, Martha and her husband were fleeing when they had an accident. Her husband got seriously injured and when Martha tried to wave down people to help her, they ignored her. Eventually her husband died and turned and she soon went quite mad, some would say, rather insane, some would say, completely cracked in her crooked cranium, some would say. And thus Martha started tracking down people who help other people and converting them into zombies using zombies. Zombie strong, people weak, some would say, some being Martha. Now I tried to keep my explanation videos as unbiased as I can, so I won't go into how much I dislike this season, especially the method in which Martha uses to kill people. No fucking way could you do stealth kills with a zombie on a stick, but I will contain my criticism for now and unleash it in an upcoming video. So stay subbed for that rant, but for now I shall remain at the very least civil. Soon Morgan finds June and Al and they continue their quest to find the remainder of their friends before they aim to head back to Virginia, where Alexandria, Rick and the gang are. So at this stage in the story, Morgan, Al, June and the newcomers, Jim and Mwemble are together, Alicia and Charlie are together, John and Strand are stranded. <laughs> they are stuck on a small island of sorts created by the flooding from the storm and Luciana is all alone. A few things happen here and there and Luciana joins back up with Morgan and the gang, but not before getting this dying man a big delicious beer. Very reminiscent of that scene in Scrubs where the dying man's request is a tasty brew. I mean, that would probably be my dying request as well. I mean, beer is it's just, it's so tasty, man. Then this happens. Morgan's mate gets tracked down by Martha who has stolen Al's truck. She confronts them, but Wendell shoots her heaps good. She escapes in the truck, leaving the gang on foot. So a bunch of shit happens with the zombie queen trying to kill them all. By a bunch of shit, I mean them talking smack back and forth on the radio. Morgan's mates without a vehicle are on the run from Mad Martha seek refuge in a nearby hospital only to be overrun by the dead, forcing the gang to barricade themselves on the roof. Jim gets bit by a zombie and it's all very sad. He just wanted to make beer, man. Alicia and Charlie, who have recently recovered Al's truck, rescue John and Strand from the island prison protected by the giant alligator. Don't even get me fucking started on that. Morgan's mates escape the hospital when Jim, in an act of, perhaps for once, selflessness, sacrifices himself, causing a distraction. But wait, not before he gives away his secret super beer recipe to Mo. <laughs> I really love the beer arc. It's just cool, you know what I mean, man? Anyway, Jim's death distraction allows the rest of the gang to escape. A bunch of shit happens like Mad Martha poisons them with antifreeze. Martha gets bit by a zombie. Morgan cuffs her to a car. She dies and turns. Morgan gets back just in time to suggest to the gang that they should all get drunk because ethanol, which is just a fancy word for alcohol, counters the poisoning effects of antifreeze, apparently. So they all get drunk on Jimbo's beer, which Morgan coincidentally found a truck full of the stuff on the way back. What are the odds? But regardless, it's sweet and kind of cool as Jimbo once said, history is built on beer, which is quite fitting seeing as beer saved all their lives. Jimbo's beer specifically. Morgan then tracks down Martha who has turned into a zombie, ripped off her own arm and ends her for good by impaling her right in the face. Well, now that all the trouble has been dealt with and everyone is united, they can finally head to Alexandria to join with Rick and the rest of the cast of The Walking Dead. Yeah! Nah. Morgan once again has a flippant change of heart and decides to stay in the area to help those who need it, just like the original package lever had intended. They use the old care package man's journals to find his headquarters, which is an old denim factory. Morgan says they can use this as their base from which they can continue to drop care packages around the place to those who need them. Alicia says that it can't just be about the boxes. We have to do what her mum would do, build this into something more. Al suggests using her recordings to locate former lost souls and bring them into the fold or help them in any way they can. The season ends with a little montage set presumably not long after the events we just saw with the gang setting out to find those in need of help. And that's it, baby! The season is over. So let's quickly play Dead or Alive. At the end of season four of Fear the Walking Dead, we have Dead, Dead, Alive, 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 Dead, Dead, Alive, 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 Dead, Alive, Alive, Dead! Unknown, unknown, unknown.
So where are these guys? Well, there have been comments by showrunners Andrew Chambliss and Ian Goldberg suggesting that Daniel is still out there and quote, very good chance that he will appear in the Walking Dead universe. The same goes for Walker and Crazy Dog, but who knows for sure what will actually take place. Also, now that Madison and Nick are gone, what sort of connection between them still exists? I mean, Daniel and Strand, I guess, but Walker and who? I mean, it's kind of all over since Madison is no more, so who cares? As far as the Proctors go, well, there's been no comment and no hint in the show. Yes, of course they could come back. It's the Walking Dead, they pretty much do anything they want on a whim. But as far as hints go that they may be returning, there has yet to be anything confirmed or even suggested, at least not that I have seen. But let's not forget that this has been well over a year since the dam incident as well, and the characters are quite far away from where that all took place, and most of the characters involved in the dam incident are fucking dead. And yes, Madison has been confirmed dead and won't be returning. Well, I say that because that's what the showrunners said, but I've been wrong before. So let's quickly talk a bit behind the scenes. Why Nick dead? Why Lenny James who plays Morgan left Walking Dead? Why Madison dead? And why is this massive tonal shift in series? Lenny James, who plays Morgan, has said that he totally had a choice to leave The Walking Dead. It wasn't forced upon him, which is refreshing to know seeing as Chandler Riggs, who plays Carl, was forced to leave, i.e. killed off against his will, apparently due to contract disputes, as in m -m -m money Then Scott Gimble, whomever, came to James with the idea to have the two shows cross over, and James liked the idea. He left The Walking Dead and and moved to fear the walking dead at his own volition but why leave a higher profile show well possibly to become more of a main character with far more screen time and lines etc maybe to avoid his comic book death which in the comics happened ages ago during the first attack on alexandria maybe he didn't like the way the walking dead was headed maybe he just liked the idea and where it was taking his character we don't know for sure other than that he made the choice frank delane who plays nick left the show to pursue other roles so again it was the actor's choice to leave he said amongst other things he misses europe as he's not an american the work was hard and he wanted to find new, more challenging roles. In other words, he just got over it, so he bailed. Fun fact, he wanted Nick to have an extremely unremarkable death, like slipping on a banana pill or falling over and hitting his head. But of course, everything has to be dramatic on The Walking Dead. Kim Dickens, who plays Madison, however, unfortunately had no choice in the matter. She was written out of the series against the actor's will and has gone on record saying she is sad and that Madison had many more stories to tell. So why did they choose to have her killed? Well, there may have been some politics there i don't know i'm just gonna say blah 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 creative choices so there you have it folks season four recap and shit let me know if i have missed anything of significance made a mistake or if you have a question leave a comment like and subscribe and all that shit and i will talk to you all again very soon thanks for watching friends